Hello everyone. Welcome to Power Electronics. In this session, we will discuss the thyristor dynamic turn on and turn off characteristics. Let us start with the turn on characteristics. When the SCR is turned on with the application of the gate signal, the SCR does not respond immediately at the instant of application of the gate trigger pulse. In the beginning, there is no appreciable increase in the SCR anode current, which is because only a small portion of the silicon pellet in the immediate vicinity of the gate electrode starts conducting. There is a time delay known as the turn on time represented by T on between the application of gate signal and the conduction of thyristor. In this interval, two time parameters come into picture. The first one is the delay time and the next one is the rise time. Now the delay time represented by TD is defined as the time interval between 10% of the gate current which is 0.1 Ig and 10% of thyristor on state current that is 0.1 Ig. So this time interval is called as the delay time. The rise time on the other hand which is represented by Tr is the time required for the anode current or simply the thyristor current to rise from 10% of on state current that is 0.1 Ig to 90% of on state current that is 0.9 Ig. So the <coughs> rise time can be seen as the time that is required by the anode current of the thyristor to rise from 0.1 Ig to 0.9 Ig. The complete turn on time T on is defined therefore as the time interval between 10% of steady state gate current that is 0.1 Ig and 90% of the steady state thyristor on state current that is 0.9 Ig. In uh, general, the overall turn on time T on is the sum of the delay time Td and the rise time Tr. This is the dynamic turn on characteristics of the thyristor. Now let us go to the dynamic turn off characteristics. Once the thyristor is switched on and the anode current is above the latching current value, the gate loses control over the device. That means the gate circuit cannot be used to turn off the device. A thyristor which is in the on state can be turned off by reducing the forward current to a level below the holding current IH. Further, the anode current needs to be maintained below the holding current value for a sufficiently long time so that all the excess carriers in the four layers are swept out or recombined. After the anode current falls to zero, we cannot apply forward voltage across the device due to the presence of charge carriers in the four layers. So we must sweep out or recombine all these charge carriers for proper turn on of the SCR. So the turn off time of the SCR can be defined as the interval between anode current falling to zero and the device regains its forward blocking mode ability. Uh, we will discuss both the line commutated and force commutated thyristors. In line commutated circuits or simply AC circuits, the input current goes through a natural zero value and the device will therefore automatically switch off. Whereas in the force commutated or DC circuits where no neutral value of the current exists, the forward current is reduced by making the voltage across the anode and cathode go negative and thus forcing the current through the SCR to go zero. On the basis of removing the charge carriers from the four layers, the turn off time of the SCR can be divided into two time regions. The first one is the reverse recovery time. You can see this is TRR and then you have the gate recovery time represented by TGR. The gate recovery time is also called as the recombination time. Now let us discuss the reverse recovery time first. 
and then we will continue to discuss the gate recovery or the recombination time. Now, it is the, the reverse recovery time is the interval in which charge carriers are removed from the junctions J1 and J3 of the thyristor. Now, if you look at this diagram, at time instant T1, anode current falls to zero and it will continue to increase in reverse direction with the same slope as that of the forward decreasing current. This is what is the forward decreasing current. So, the current continues to decrease between T1 and T2. At time T2, the carrier charge density is not sufficient enough to maintain the reverse current and hence after T2, this negative current will start to decrease. The value of the current at exact time instant T2 is thus called as the peak reverse recovery current. This negative current what we have applied between T1 and T2 will help to sweep out the carriers from junctions J1 and J3. Now, due to the rapid decreasing of the anode current, a reverse spike voltage may appear across the SCR. We have a diagram of this. Right. So, this is actually what happens at the end of the reverse recovery time. A negative spike will appear across the SCR. Now, let me come back to the characteristic diagram and continue. Now, the time interval between the instance T3 and T1 is called as the reverse recovery time. After that, the device will start to follow the applied reverse voltage and it gains its ability to block the applied forward voltage. So, this is about the reverse recovery time. Now, coming to the gate recovery or the reverse recombination time, even after sweeping out the charge carriers from junction J1 and J3 during the reverse recovery time, there still remains trapped charge carriers in junction J2 which prevent the SCR from blocking the forward voltage. Now, this you might understand is because the thyristor requires two voltages to turn on. The first one is between the anode to cathode, the second one is across the gate to cathode. Now, since you have used some gate voltage, you also need to use or you also need to remove these charge carriers and the time taken for removing these gate introduced charge carriers is what actually is called as the gate recombination time. Now, this trapped charge can be removed by recombination only and the interval in which this recombination takes place is called as the reverse recombination or the gate recombination time. A negative reverse voltage would greatly reduce this recombination time and the gate recombination time is dependent on the magnitude of the reverse voltage applied. So, this is about the reverse recombination time. So, in general, the device turnoff time which is represented by TQ is the sum of reverse recovery time and reverse recombination time or gate recombination time. So, I can write TQ equals TRR plus TGR. At the end of turnoff that is at the end of TQ, a depletion layer develops across the junction J2 and the thyristor recovers its ability to withstand the forward voltage. That is, the thyristor will once again re-enter the forward blocking mode. To ensure that the SCR has successfully turned off, it is required that the circuit to turn off time, which is represented by TC, be greater than the device or SCR turn off time represented by TQ. Now, this introduces the new time interval which is TC. So, why should I always make sure the negative voltage applied be greater than TC and not just TQ is because most of the times, particularly in forced commutation circuitry, you take extra elements, particularly extra passive elements to aid the commutation of the working SCR. For example, in this circuit, which is a forced commutated circuit, you can see a capacitor and an inductor are used to commutate the working thyristor T1. So, if you simply aim at the value of negative voltage being equal to that of the time taken for turning on, turning off only the thyristor T1, 
then if there are any charge carriers either in capacitor or if there is any inductor current this current may once again drive the transistor into forward conduction state in order to avoid any such false triggering of the thyristor one must always aim for the commutation period which is equal to the circuit turn off time so in simple words the circuit turn off time can be defined as the time required to turn off the thyristor making sure there is no current that is no current flows across the immediate circuitry in which the thyristor is connected now let us come back that is about the dynamic turn off characteristics so let us come back and look at the uh, circuits here so we have both ac uh, circuitry as well as dc circuitry and since ac commutation circuitry is also called as line commutated circuitry and since the input voltage and therefore the input current for an ac supply uh, goes through a natural zero at the beginning of negative half cycle in this type of commutation circuitry you do not require any extra element or in simple words you do not require an extra commutation circuitry to turn off the thyristor the same process what we just discussed during dynamic turn off will be applicable for line commutated thyristors also except that no extra elements are used on the other hand for force commutated thyristor circuitry since you are using extra elements to turn off the working thyristor you must make sure the overall applied time for commutating the thyristor be greater than the circuit turn off time in which the thyristor is connected right so this is about the dynamic turn on and turn off characteristics of a thyristor thank you